Welcome to Your Career Revolution podcast presented by The Entrepreneur Source. My name is Mike Toper, and we've got uh, really an inspirational uh, conversation I've been looking forward to for a while to having here today with uh, two of our guests. So uh, we're going to introduce them in just a moment. Really looking forward to this discussion. And of course, I'd like to, before we begin, bring in my, along my co-host. She is the, she's becoming the princess of podcasts, the queen of career coaching, that is Tamara Loring, the uh, Chief of Brand Ideology with the Entrepreneur Source. And Tamara, how's everything going in New England today? Beautiful day in New England, Mike, and I'm super honored to be here with our guest today. So thank you. Yeah, and let's bring them in. Uh, very excited. We've got uh, Ed Gao along with uh, Dedong uh, Wan. Uh, let's have an introduction from both you guys, starting with Dedong. Hi, uh, this is Tadon Wan. I'm uh, with Seniors Helping Seniors. I'm a client of uh, TES. And Ed? Great. My name is Ed Gao, and I'm a career ownership coach with the Entrepreneur Source. And we're going to get right into it tomorrow uh, if you want to kind of lay the groundwork here, because again, uh, very, very interesting uh, little story we've got here uh, with uh, our client, if you will. Absolutely. I'd love to, Mike. Dong, you know, when I heard your story or read your story for the first time, I was immediately captivated because your story is one of what it means to be a human being. Um, your story is one of resilience, of life, finding purpose again. And ultimately, it's a story of transform transformation. I feel like by being intentional, you are elevating the well-being of humanity. And we don't take that lightly. So I'd love to hear more about your story. But in the meantime, I just want to say congratulations and thank you for making it your mission to reimagine and reclaim the life of your dreams and for trusting and allowing us to be a part of your journey. We appreciate you being on our podcast here with us today. Thanks, Tamara. Very happy to be here. Yeah. And Dadon, can you uh, do us a favor and yeah, talk to us. Uh, we've laid the groundwork for you. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your career background and explain uh, just a little bit of your journey along the way to where you got to, um, you know, a point where you decided that you needed a change? Yeah, I spent my entire career with um, a global consulting company doing all technology innovation, anything emerging, right, from, you know, internet, e-commerce to now AI. That's really the bread and butter for my entire career. And I had a chance, really had, had a privilege to work with a lot of great clients, global 2000 companies. But it's all about technology, how we can use technology to make business more efficient and create new business opportunities and so on. But um, around the, uh, 2021, um, you know, a family tragedy, my wife just passed away. I, I expected it, and then um, that's really turned everything upside down for me. So all the things I've been working for, I enjoyed, but it's, my life is shattered. And uh, that's when I start to ask questions about why am I here? <laughs> where, am I go where am I going from here? And that's when I ran into Ed, and we start to explore some of those questions. and. Um, so for the following two years, I keep asking the same question, and we look through a lot of different opportunities as well, and nothing seemed to click. Yeah, but we continue to explore. And meanwhile, I did end up another corporate job here in Dallas and moved from Chicago to Dallas. And I, I thought I needed a change of scenery in order to really uh, press a re re reset button, right, to get things uh, just. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's when we finally came across the opportunity called Seniors Health Studios, in part because this is really about, you know, as Tamara, you mentioned, human connection. And uh, so to me, this is completely different, right, from technology to, to you know, about senior care. It's, it's 180 degree different. And also from technology innovation, which about exploring new way of doing things to a franchise system, which is everything figured out for you. Okay, you just follow the formula and uh, um, and you, you you will do well. So, so to me, again, this is a complete transformation, but 
you know, looking back now, almost six months since, well, more than six months now since then, get into this bus, I said, well, I wouldn't change anything if I had to do it again. I mean, it's almost, you know, and I'm so sorry about your loss. I cannot even imagine what it must feel like when your world just gets turned upside down like that. And, you know, for me, you're the hero in this story right now, because, you know, through the grief and everything, it seems like you took it as an opportunity. And this is why I said, you know, you're elevating humanity. You found a way to find purpose and find something that was not only going to serve your life's purpose, but give back to others. So the business you chose, I think one of the things that struck me when I read it, you said, it's not just a business. People may see what say, what is this IT guy doing in a completely different industry? But for you, it was about the cause about making a difference in people's lives. Now, IT people make a difference in people's lives every day. Without IT, you know, we wouldn't be doing our online banking. We wouldn't be doing this podcast right they now. They help us uh, do this right here, yeah. <laughs> it's just a different way of connecting with people. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about how you were able to hone in on that cause and why that was so important to you? Yeah, I was reading a book called uh, um, The Second Mountain. I don't know if you heard about that. It's all about, you know, what is important in life. And for I, looking back on my own career, I focus on the first mountain. It's typically the American dream, right? It's all about getting a good, good paid job, have a family and um, have a house. You know, the typical things that center around me as a person. The second mountain is about going beyond yourself to be part of a larger thing. And that, you know, when I was reading that book, it's really start to dawn on me that what, what I've been through is just the first part of my story. And I need to find a way to open up the second chapter. So the second chapter is all about going beyond yourself and to be part of a larger thing. And the question is, what is the larger thing for me? And um, I think part of it is that post-COVID, working in the corporate world also is very different. It's an incredibly isolated experience. And um, I also came across this report by Surgeon General called declaring that loneliness and isolation is a national epidemic. And so uh, if, we, if me as a working professional feel so isolated, what about people who are in their 70s, 80s, 90s? And uh, mm -hmm. it's even more isolating. It just happened that I did some work in senior care when I was with the consulting company before. So I had some exposure about the social context of uh, social isolation for seniors. So I said, well, this is something I really want to be part of because there's a much more direct way to impact life, or bring, bring smile, and smiles and the sunlight to people who need the most, right? So that's it's everything just started to come into I just started to come together where I was putting all the pieces, you know, just look at what happened in the past and uh, what I was reading and also what I was experiencing as you know, as a you know, professional in the corporate world at that time. And Tamara, I mean, we've talked to a number of um, clients through this podcast, and you have certainly over the years where they can have any number of reasons for reimagining their career, right? And it's not like it was a revolt. It was more, it, this is, seems just so personal. It was almost like a reclaiming and, and I guess, uh, figuring out, you know, what to do next and, and how to explore things, which in the Dong mentioned reading that book, it kind of ties in obviously to TES's book, Your Career Revolution, um, just about exploring a new opportunity. Yeah, his story is such an inspiration. I feel like if, you know, um, he can do it. So many people will say, wait a minute, you know, um, my concerns or my issues or my troubles and worry in life may be pale to compare to what he's gone through. And if he can do it, like a book says, you know, it's maybe revolting the norm and the status quo and um, all the rules and regulations that were given for you. And he took a moment to pause. And that's why I feel honored that he trusted us to be that safe space and that sounding board where his coach could really help him think out loud and look at what he's gone to do. He's completely reimagined and reclaimed his life. And not only 
given himself purpose, but given other people purpose. Um, not only are you an employer, but the people you serve, the people you employ. So it's really an interdependent win, win, win relationship. I mean, I think if the cover doesn't say it, right, it's whatever your place of darkness is, there was hope and you walk through that do door and you're bringing other people along with you. Their lives are better because of what you do for the community and the way you touch them. And that's why I just, you know, I, I couldn't wait to talk to you today because I want to thank you for what you're doing and for your openness because the ripple effect we won't even be able to measure the impact that you're having on other human beings so thank you well um, it's so funny that you use the one 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 situation that's exactly how i felt about when i first introduced my first caregiver to the client and you know, within five minutes i saw this they're almost like a two long lost friends can find each other and all three of us agree that, you know, what I'm doing is about to continue creating and replicating movements like that. I call it a magical moment because it is such a uh, awakening moment for, for the caregivers because they find something that rewarding for them, but also for the, for the client and also for me as a business owner, because I'm, you know, creating a platform that allows us to bring, you know, those people together and create these magic moments for all of them. Yeah, and, and let's bring, go, ahead. go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, and let's let's bring in the guy who kind of helped steer you in that direction, obviously, and that's Ed, who's uh, once again a career coach with TES. And Ed, you you know, as far as a background, before you got into career coaching, you were also in the corporate world, kind of going through the grind for a number of years. Um, did that kind of help you that your own background experience? relate to Dadong in some way? And, and can you talk a little bit about your relationship, how you guys got hooked up and, and how you kind of helped guide him along to, uh, to a potential new opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. I spent 31 years in corporate America and needed a change. You know, my wife and I reached a point where we woke up one day and we're like, we need to take control over what we do. Um, I had worked for others for my entire career it was comfortable. That was what I was used to. I didn't know anything else. So when I first, I first engaged with my own coach from the entrepreneur source, this gave me an opportunity to really start to ask some questions of myself. Like, what would it be like if we could own that side of our lives? Um, and that experience really shaped, helped shape the direction that we ended up going in and led me to then joining the, the entrepreneur source. And I've got to tell you, it is such a change. I love what I do. I wake up every morning and I'm excited because I get to have great conversations with some wonderful people. And Daedong is a great example of it. Over time, Daedong and I became great friends. Daedong, would you, would you agree? It, Absolutely, yeah. You know, it, it started uh, with a, a phone conversation. Um, Daedong was in a was it a Panera Bread? Yeah, Panera uh, Bread. Yeah, that's yeah. where we hang out. Yeah, every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we had a lot of, there was there was some background noise going on there. There were some other things going on. But, you know, as Dedong and I were talking about it, you know, he told me he likes going there because there's activity, there are people. And and, and that gave me the sense that he was, he was a social person that wanted to have the interaction. And so the opportunity for us to speak and start talking about what directions might be open to him um, became kind of an open subject. Uh, it was he was very open with me about what he had been through, um, you know, a family tragedy. And, and that led into a conversation of, as Daedong said earlier, I'm not really sure what I want to do. I'm not sure what the next what the next step is. Um, and yeah, Ed, if you, if we can have some conversations and talk through this, and maybe if you can help me with that and find a direction, that would be great. We didn't set any sort of expectations with respect to business ownership. We just entered into this as a conversation of what does the next step look like? And Daedong, I, you know, I'm going to go back to the vision statement that you came up with early on. It was, it was shortly after we went through our U2.0 conversation um, and you know, I've, I actually pulled it up and if it's okay, I'm going to read it to you, Absolutely, uh, sure. writer, but, um, 
you know, in light of my recent family tragedy, uh, tragedy in the next six to 12 months, I want to be able to, to totally turn the page and have a fresh head start on the next chapter of my life, both personally and professionally. I truly want to establish a more optimistic, confident, and more loving self who can continue to exert positive impact on people around, uh, uh, around myself and beyond. And when, when, when I read that, right, when we completed that and we were, we were exchanging some messages and going back and forth with this, I, I thought, man, this was, this, this was really something. We had the foundation of something to work from. Um, without being too detailed, without being too specific, it was, uh, I think it really pointed where he was at the time and helped us kind of drive that path. Yeah, that, that's excellent. And uh, Dedong, from your perspective, I mean, obviously, you know, Ed laid it out how you guys were able, how you were able to kind of set a little groundwork, but can you kind of just tell us or, or explain you know, how working with a career coach and working with Ed kind of helped lead you to, again, where you are now, which is with uh, seniors helping seniors and, and kind of exemplifying everything you just described there and everything you described as far as helping other people and, and kind of how that relationship helped you out. Yeah, I think uh, for me, as Ed was saying, we, we became so close, a friend, right? And and uh, what I appreciate what Ed brings to the uh conversation is an external and professional perspective about you know, just to shed light about the situation I was in and uh, and I share, you know, just to be able to openly explore the different options um, that are out there, right? So over the course of that, I think of almost a year after the tragedy, we continue to just, you know, have the conversation every other week and I think at one time, yeah, every other week and just look at different options, but also some of the new questions that come across as I was trying to dig myself out of this, I call it deep, deep, the deepest valley I have ever been in my life. Oh, and, definitely. and just have have that kind of trust, openness and, um, and kind of have somebody to bounce through ideas and get some advice as to what kind of you know, what kind of things I should be, what kind of question I should be asking, right? And again, also at the same time, at that time, I started to bring some of the business opportunities as well. So it allows me to to, to look through that specific opportunity and say, well, is that right for me or is that not, right? So over the course of that process, that helped me crystallize exactly what, what kind of thing that truly aligned with my internal compass and something that could, you know, the, the different ingredients or the make the makeup of the, of the attributes that would resonate deep inside of me. So it's a discovery. It's truly a discovery process. It took that long because it, that's what it takes to really find something that truly aligns with who I am. And in order to be able to take someone there, right, it takes a lot of trust. In our book, we talk about leadership, relationship and then opportunity so i'm hearing just the respect that you have for ed and ed i cannot thank you enough for meeting the dong where he was at he clearly was at a place of hurt and rather than just bulldozing and having an agenda it sounds like you gave him the freedom to rethink life and think about what could be next and i mean it sounds like you guys worked for quite some time together, but you knew, knew that that is what the situation needed. There was no time pressure or end goal. It was just like, let's take the time. I'm going to be a sounding board. And you were extremely patient. Um, Dadon, would you say that that really set the foundation for the relationship? I mean, you guys said you are friends now. Um, yeah, absolutely, Tamara, I think. Yeah, uh, what I appreciate uh, and is you know, just without the agenda, without that kind of typical trying to we'll try to get go somewhere because we didn't know at that time. I didn't know where I'm going, and uh, it just takes that kind of back and forth, and even just having in that small talk of, of uh, conversation and try to figure out, you know, what's what's coming next. It's such a gradual and a fluid process, and it takes that level of um, trust and uh, uh, with each other to to be able to do that. Yeah. And I, I feel like, mm -hmm. I, I was going to say to you, I feel like that's something we see a lot at TES, right? 
Oh, absolutely. Exactly. It's that unwavering trust and just the faith that it's not about Ed and Ed's agenda, but it's really about you at that moment and how we can be of service. And I feel like, Dong, that's what you're carrying forward in the business that you're in. Yes, it is a business, but it's more about the cause and doing right by other human beings. And then the business takes care of itself. Yeah, I call it the business of heart, right? So I think that's a key difference between you know, a career and you know, a job than something I'm doing right now. And because I'm I'm 100% in it, okay? From the moment I wake up in the morning to, you know, weekend, everything else. Yeah, it's, it's truly, um, you, you feel that you know, you're becoming a different person when you're into something like this. True. It's not I just mean, a job that you're grinding out. It's become yeah. a calling. Is yeah. that not the 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 social media moment right there? I mean, that was you just lined it up perfectly, Day Dong. Just how you feel right there. I mean, that's awesome um, to express that, like you said, not to feel like a job or a career, but to feel you know kind of drawn to it. So that's that's really incredible. Um, as we kind of wrap things up here, I just want to go back to Ed really quickly. And, um, you know, we ask some of our coaches this, but in, in your experience and, you know, obviously De Dong is not, you know, he's not somebody that was just said, oh, I'm just going to make a career change. You know, there was a personal pull to this. I mean, there can be any number of reasons why somebody looks for a different opportunity in your experience and in kind of working through some of these things. Um, you know, what advice or, or thoughts would you have for somebody who, you know, maybe no matter what the situation is, just is unsure of where they are and thinking about making a change. I, you know, I would, I would encourage them to challenge themselves to explore, right? Most people, they get comfortable in what they do. Um, much like myself, corporate America was that comfort zone, right? And until you start to explore, until you start to ask some questions, you don't really recognize um, what's really most important to you. And the, the part of the journey that I enjoy most is working with, you know, the people I get to, to have these conversations with and identify what's most important to them, right? To talk about their goals, talk about their needs, and then, you know, separating the two and then talk about what their expectations are, right? And give them an opportunity to create their own criteria so that they can compare and contrast different opportunities and possibilities that they come to work based on what's most important to them, right? They've taken their income, their lifestyle, their wealth, and their equity, and they've explained to me what's most important to them. And for us to be able to put that all back together and say, okay, well, is there something outside of what I'm doing right now that can get me to ultimately where I want to be? That's the fun part of all this, right? And that's, and that's what I would, I would, you know, express to folks who maybe aren't sure or maybe they think they're sure, but give themselves an opportunity. We give you a safe space in order to contemplate, right? There's no obligation. There's no thought that this is the right thing to do because maybe it's not. Maybe business ownership isn't the direction. It, but perhaps by going through what we go through together, that right path becomes more clear. Yeah. So. T. That's that's excellent. T, any closing thoughts? Absolutely. You know, for anyone who's contemplating to make some meaningful change in their lives, I just want you to know that you don't need to go on that journey alone. Seek out help. Seek out a resource. If you have a dream, it is worthwhile pursuing, and we would be happy to be your dream champion. So pick up the book, reach out to a coach, we will help you reimagine and reclaim the life of your dreams. Excellent. I, I really appreciate it. This has been, this has been really an illuminating conversation we've had here. I want to thank uh, our guests here, uh, Ed Gao, along with Dedong Wong. Uh, appreciate you guys for coming on. Uh, for the Chief of Brand Ideology for TES, Tamara Loring, my name is Mike Toper. You've been listening to Your Career Revolution podcast. Thanks and have a good one. 